here we are at the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show. This is our part two because we've got some incredible highlights, stuff we missed when we did our live stream. We said we were going to look at Citroëns and then didn't. So here we are. We've got a Citroen H van. Nothing special, you say, but this is a right hand drive H van. So the steering wheel is on this side. I think it's one of three that were built to test the market here in the UK, but we all got cold feet and said we preferred vans with terrible column gear changes instead. So the H van in the UK never came to be. It's got sliding doors both sides and that right hand drive steering wheel. So incredible vans in production from 1947 until 1981. Quite extraordinary things. And around here, we, we haven't got the timing right, but they are doing suspension demos uh, on this DS, hence the um, contraption to try and take the fumes away when it runs. But so they can demonstrate the up and down of the Citroen suspension. And if we carry on round, over here, they're doing a gearbox swap on a Citroen Traction Avant. So it looks like the gearbox is back in. Hi, Barry. Have you already done the gearbox change? Well, put the engine gearbox in. Oh, okay. It will start. Oh, okay. Will it start? Did I go the wrong side? <coughs> oh, that one. There we go. So that's gone in today? Yeah, about two and a half hours ago. Two and a half hours ago, brilliant. So for those who don't know, this is um, Barry Annals. You run Bourne Citroen Centre. And uh, Barry was on stage with his son Pete restoring James Walsh's 2CV at the November show last year. So Have you been out to see his car yet? Oh yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Because you've done so much to that since it was last here. <laughs> Because it was your car, wasn't it? It was my car, yeah. Because I've, I've seen that car around for years and yeah. years yeah, well, with its I, little hard top roof yeah. thing. Put it together in the same November. Yeah. James Burnham did his uh, Northumberland trip. And then it was like Steve from HP Bodies. He, he fell in love with our story and James's plight. <coughs> yeah. And um, he said, I want to paint it. So wow. I want to make it nice. So, so it came back to us. We took it apart again, gave him the body shell and all the panels, and um, he, he did his magic. And um, then, literally, 10 days ago, oh. we, we put it back, started putting <laughs> it Nothing back like together. a deadline. No, put it back together, and um, Wednesday we got it MOT'd. Yeah. Um, and then Thursday, obviously, James is off with COVID. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Um, we, we, we brought it here Thursday, and... Um, yeah, it looks amazing. It's just, it looks right, which is really nice. Because yeah. you worry if you re repaint something, you'll lose yeah. the character of it. But no, it still looks beautiful. Super. Well, thank you very much. And we should carry on having a look at our real highlights of the show. We also rather overlooked Rovers. So we'll start with the Rover BRMs. These 200s that have got the variable valve timing engine, the VVC, 1.8 litres. And of course, the crazy, crazy interior with all this red leather. Bit, bit like a gentleman's club in there, I believe. But yeah, great to see. It looks like they're doing some sunroof repair work on this stand. And then we've got the Tomcats, all the Rover Coupes, doing this very shady example. I forget what that color's called, but it is an absolute beauty of a color. But not a fast back with a lift up back. It's got a stubby little boot, like so. But my Australian friends were saying, where are the Australian cars? And we missed this. How, how do you miss something that big? It's a Leyland P76 Targa Florio Special Edition. I've known this car has been in the UK for a while now. And it's the first time I've actually seen it in the metal, I think. And it's just amazing. It's so good to see this uh, Australian developed, styled car designed to take a 44 litre can in the boot and uh, yeah they're extraordinary cars it's got the super v8 engine you've got these little repeater lights on the back it's just lovely so to see a full test of one of these in bright green hairy lime do go and find it on my channel leyland p76 
They are fascinating cars. Uh, Rover Streetwise, great to see. I really like them with all the grey cladding, but it really adds to the sense of style about them. People mocked this car when they came out, but it kind of predated loads of other manufacturers doing exactly the same thing. And it's kind of the SUV that isn't an SUV. There was a Volkswagen Polo done like that. There were loads of different ones. Did you know that, no, Princess Anne still owns one of these. She still owns a Middlebridge Scimitar. But when you own a Scimitar, Princess Anne is all anyone thinks of. But the Middlebridge Scimitars were built after the design rights were sold by Reliance. Uh, so this was built about 1989. And of course it all stems from the original SE4 Scimitar Coupe. So we've got Ford Mechanicals. I think that some had straight six originally, later V6. Uh, but of course, what made the Scimitar really stand out was the GTE. Uh, Tom Caron at Ogle Design uh, came up with this beautiful sporting estate concept. And uh, it's that which really helped the Scimitar to notoriety, really. There was nothing else quite like it at first. It um, inspired quite a few copycats. Uh, the Jensen Healy was available as a sporting estate, uh, the uh, Gilburn Invader, and uh, the Volvo P1800 ES. Vroom vroom. There we go, vroom vroom. I imagine that one does go vroom quite merrily. And uh, we, we also missed in our live stream, we missed the Saabs, which is kind of unforgivable. That one's yellow, which means I can punch a child. <laughs> no, we're not going for that now. Uh, we've got a late 9.5 here. The carbon wrap, these were originally chrome, and I think the carbon wrap works really well just to tone things down again. 9.3 convertible, uh, 9000 saloon with a headlamp wiper moment. Uh, uh, Saab 900 turbo, headlamp wiper moment. Saab 99 with the best headlamp wiper moment. These little push brooms that push out across the headlamp, best headlamp wipers ever. So this is a Saab 93, the forerunner of the 96. Uh, early 96s had the two-stroke engine, but that's because they were an evolution of this earlier 93. So we've got a three-cylinder two-stroke engine at the back, at the front rather, with a radiator at the back. And this, being an earlier car, has got the slightly smaller rear window, but they're absolutely fabulous. That there, Paul Cowland off the telly, has a big soft spot these and I can entirely understand why they're lovely lovely cars to drive but uh, behind us more things we miss the uh, Volvo Amazons including this police one I believe the Volvo Amazon was the first non-British police car ever used so uh, yeah great to see this one's still got the cones and everything in the back the police light we've got some hats in there as well absolutely marvelous that is a joy to see yeah, we've got a 262C here. So this is the 200 series turned into a hot rod coupe, bizarrely. This one looks like it's American Spec. It's got the American Spec headlamps. And it's had the vinyl remo roof removed. Most of them had that. If you come in and have a look here at the owner's manual, that's what most of them look like. Almost always silver with a vinyl roof. But I think this works really well in the black, but they're quite hilarious. Of all the cars to turn into a coupe, big boxy Volvo, maybe not the ideal one, but uh, so good to see it here. The huge American bumpers. So Triumph TR7, not all that remarkable, but this one is because it is an estate. It was converted by Crayford, hence the little crest here, who did many convertible and estate conversions, and they called it the Tracer. And this is the only one built. They used it to try and get more orders. And it seems no one made any. I must, must admit, this is all a bit um, unusual. But then you, you've got that line there to follow as well. So a bit of a struggle, I think, to try and make that a beautiful thing. If you want to see an alternative version, uh, Triumph themselves developed something called the Lynx, which was uh, basically a TR8 estate. And there's one at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon, Warwickshire, uh, you can go and check out. Aussie folks, we've got another one for you. We come back to this, we glossed over this in the live stream. It's Austin A40 Tora was actually handcrafted in Melbourne, I believe. So it's another Aussie build. It's um, beautifully patinated. The seats, I would say, look a little firm, a little on the firm side. 
But yeah, interesting. So these were locally built in Australia and then I presume they did the Torah conversions themselves. Fascinating. So there you go, that's our little follow-up video, some personal highlights from the show. And there's no better place to finish than this. We looked at it um, in the live stream. The NSU Sport Prince is such an immaculate, beautiful little car, which hopefully we'll see again another day. So uh, I want to say thank you very much for watching and uh, head to the store if you would like to buy merchandise. Maybe we'll actually have got these online in green by the time you actually watch this. And we shall see you in a future video. Farewell.